Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Mason, and I want to speak a little bit about comets, specifically historical observations of comets. And here we have some paintings and renditions of comets seen in uh, various years, specifically 1401, this picture here, 1577, this one, and 1618. And uh, the one in 1577 is particularly interesting because this is the comet that Tycho, or Tycho Brahe, observed and measured uh, a pa the parallax, or attempted to measure the parallax to see if the comet could be in the atmosphere of the Earth, located very nearby, or whether it was much further away, like out in the uh, planetary system. And he found uh, that there wasn't any parallax that could be observed from Earth. That indicated that comets were indeed further out away from Earth. They weren't part of the atmosphere of the Earth. And so, uh, parallax would be the shifting of the comet as seen from two different locations on the Earth at the same time. One observer sees a comet in one position, another observer sees it in another position compared to stars. Or at the same time, uh, at different times from the same location as the Earth spun, for instance. And so this wasn't observed, this didn't show that uh, comets indeed were uh, extraterrestrial, they did not belong to the Earth. And uh, uh, this one in particular in 1618 shows how fantastically bright some of these comets uh, are and these were, can be seen much across the world and one of the things that, uh, uh, that the people wondered about is could comets have any influence on, on the lives here or could they be telling us things about predicting the future and this sort of thing. And so uh, a lot of different cultures interpreted comets in different ways. Now in uh, 1682, there was a comet that was observed and Edmund Halley predicted that that comet was one that had returned every 76 years. And Edmund Halley urged Newton to publish and even paid for the book uh, Principia and he predicted the return of the comet. So he had seen the comet in 1682, but had also knew that it had been seen in 1531 and 1607. And so he predicted these were the same comet and, predict, and that 76 years later in 1758, it would return again and indeed it did. Um, the resulting idea was that the idea of gravity as predicted by Isaac Newton and explained by the Universal Law of Gravitation and published in 1686 not only described how planets orbit the Sun using the force of gravity but also other objects like comets can orbit the Sun and uh, under the same type of law and predicted the same way following just exactly like they were done with Kepler's laws, comets follow elliptical orbits, and this is all explained by the force of gravity between every two objects in the universe. A, uh, per, a particular Bright uh, Comet was Halley's Comet again. By this time, uh, Edmund Halley had the comet named after him. It had returned 
again in 1910. And uh, here's a drawing from that time. And we can see the orbit of the comet on the right compared to the orbit of planets. We see very circular orbits of planets and the comet coming in at a very elliptical orbit. What we don't see here also is that the uh, Halley's Comet uh, is inclined with respect, substantially with respect to the plane of the orbit of the planets. Here are some modern, more modern views in 1986. And I saw this comet in 1986. And uh, the uh, uh, comet was not as bright as 1910 because it did not come as close to the Earth. At that time, it was the same comet, more or less the same brightness as usual, but did not have as close of approach as it did in 1910, but still was a pretty spectacular comet to see. In 1994, a comet was discovered, well, it was discovered a few years before that by uh, a Shoemaker and independently, or together actually, but by Shoemaker and Levy, and it was called Shoemaker Levy 9. And it was discovered, and then it was broken into pieces. They were following it observationally, came around again near Jupiter and then hit Jupiter and the stream of pieces of this comet, it was broken apart by the tidal forces of its first flyby near Jupiter. It just broke the comet apart. The comet flew back around and um, some months uh, or a year or so later, it impacted Jupiter and these are the pieces seen just before impact by the Hubble Space Telescope. And we can see the an impact of Shoemaker-Levy 9 on the planet Jupiter in 1994. Even with a small telescope, we could see the markings on Jupiter due to the impact. So a little bit about structure of comets. Comets have two tails. They have a dust tail and an ion tail. The tails are always directed away from the sun, but the gas or the ion tail points straight away from the sun. In all cases, the dust tail curves a bit towards the orbital path. So the dust tail follows the orbit and, and as comets, uh, break apart slowly, orbit by orbit, as they get close to the sun, they become bright and produce these tails. Far away from the sun, they do not produce the tail. Far away in their orbits, they uh, appear just as a uh, icy chunk, uh, about maybe 10 kilometers in diameter. As they come in, they produce a coma, and these two tails. And the dust tail follows in the orbit and over time that it leaves behind a path of meteorites, or not, not future meteorites, they're meteoroids that are objects that have, uh, cause the meteor showers that we see. So meteor showers occur as a result of being uh, following comets, the destruction of a comet ends up producing a trail of meteoroids that produce meteor showers. So we have the nucleus, the ice and rock that is about five to 10 kilometers in diameter, usually are very often not round in shape, maybe peanut shaped. The coma, the bright evaporative cloud surrounding the nucleus. The tail, actually the two tails, the dust tail and the ion tail now. Dust is just part, particles like uh, sand, rock kind of particles. 
The ion tail are ions which are atoms that have had the electrons ripped off. They are charged particles, the electrons, protons, and other nuclei of atoms. Here is another comet that uh, was a pretty bright 1996 called Comet Hale-Bopp. And this comet, when they examined the orbit, and it was among many comets over the years, that they examined orbits and seen that it's a long period comet. Unlike Comet Halley, which is a short period comet, occurs, uh, has an orbit of about 76 years, Comet Hale-Bopp has a much, much longer thousands of year orbit period and um, as a consequence we think about a, a paradox with comets or a problem that sort of needs a solution and that is when we think about the, how bright comets are, they, they are melting as they get close to the sun and orbit the sun. They can only do so so many times. Comet will orbit again and again and again, but eventually it will melt. But we still see comets today, even though the solar system has been around a long time. So there must be a supply of new comets. And the new comets are coming in from two regions. There is the Kuiper Belt, which is uh, more nearby, out beyond Neptune, in the region of the, uh, of the orbit of Pluto, and somewhat beyond that, and the Oort cloud of comets, which is much further out, out into interstellar space, and uh, containing several, possibly several trillion comets. And occasionally these comets fall in to, towards the sun, and comet Hale-Bopp is an example of one of those long period comets.